Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real and this is This Week in Sex, a brand new segment that's going to be coming to you guys every Monday on my channel where I explore the trending news stories of the week but specifically in sex. So it's like your weekly news feed, but like a whole lot more sexy. And with no further ado, let's get into This Week in Sex. <laughs> 34 year old actor Army Hammer, who you may know from movies like Call Me By Your Name and The Social Network, has been embroiled in a rather messy sex scandal this week involving cannibalism? It seems that he sent some rather explicit DMs where he detailed his fantasies around eating someone else and maybe consuming their blood. So these are the messages that were leaked. So hard, thinking about holding your heart in my hand and controlling it when it beats. I am 100% a cannibal. I want to eat you. And then I need to drink your blood why the distance? Now, actress Bella Thorne has actually come out and defended Army Hammer, and she had this to say about the leaked DMs. I honestly can't believe this. People are crazy to fake this shit. This poor guy and his kids, like, leave him and his family alone. No way he's a freaking cannibal. Now, these leaked DMs are supposedly from a secret Instagram account that army has and he has recently come out and actually confirmed that the secret instagram account is real and there are a lot of very interesting images on this account that have also been leaked images of him doing a drug test and seeming to say that he does enjoy taking drugs and talking about going through his divorce and then an image that was leaked as well of a woman in lingerie knelt on a bed which is captioned well my ex for very good reason wife is refusing to come back to america with my children so i have to go back to cayman which sucks except there are a few silver linings like F miss cayman again while i'm down there now this prompted people to think that he was actually talking about miss Cayman from Miss Universe and they have come out basically distancing themselves from it and the Miss Universe people have been like no we have nothing to do with this and so it kind of forced him to come out a couple of days ago and basically say that he was sorry for the implication that he was having sex with Miss Cayman from Miss Universe because that is not what he meant it was just meant as a joke and the woman was someone else who we still don't know who it was but what's interesting is he has definitely admitted that this instagram account belongs to him and we know that he is kinky and that he's into bondage because some things were leaked a few years ago that indicated as much and he also did a playboy magazine interview back when he was still married to his wife where he talked about his desires to explore more kinky kinds of sex. In the interview, he says, I like the grabbing of the neck and the hair and all that, but then you get married and your sexual appetite changes. And I mean that for the better, it's not like I'm suffering anyway, but you can't really pull your wife's hair. It gets to a point where you say, I respect you too much to do these things that I kind of want to do. So I think it's fair to assume he has a slight Madonna whore complex, which is actually fairly common among men in long-term relationships. And this is where men are unable to separate the idea of their wife being a nurturing, loving being who they really respect and care about, as well as also being a sexual being and maybe a girl who wants to get down and get kinky and get her ass spanked or her hair pulled. And so this actually can make a lot of men go outside their relationship for sex because they're unable to basically simultaneously see their wife or their long-term girlfriend as both someone they respect and someone they can get down and dirty with. And this is just an issue in and of itself. That is for another Another video but as to whether I think these DMs are real I tend to think they are because he hasn't actually explicitly come out and said otherwise I do think that we're only seeing snippets of them to make them look more extreme we're not seeing the whole conversation in the lead up to what he said I think it's fair to assume there was probably a little bit of foreplay going on before he just came straight out and said I want to drink your blood but in terms of people being into the fantasy around 
playing with blood or being a cannibal, that can absolutely be a sexual role play or a fantasy for people. And in and of itself, there is nothing wrong with it. And I don't believe in kink shaming and I don't believe the media should be kink shaming him for this and saying that his fantasies are disturbing. I think the only time we should be getting disturbed is if he is actually harming women, which to this point, I have not seen any evidence of if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section down below. So great news for Sex and the City fans. Sex and the City is getting a revival. It has been confirmed that it's going to be airing on HBO Max. They are apparently due to start filming in March, which is going to be interesting given that we are still in the middle of a pandemic. I also think just the choice to maybe bring out this show again while there are literally hundreds of thousands of people dying might be a little bit tone deaf, but I still am kind of excited to see what they do with this reboot, particularly because of note, they have confirmed that Samantha, who is played by Kim Cattrall, will not be rejoining the cast. Now, if you are a Sex and the City fan, you probably already know that Carrie, who is played by Sarah Jessica Parker, has been having a behind the scenes full on feud going on for years with Kim Cattrall. It's been pretty well publicized and Kim Cattrall has essentially admitted to it as well that the two of them can't stand each other. They have fought a lot. They had a very public altercation after Kim Cattrall's brother passed away and she basically just posted on Instagram that she wants Sarah Jessica Parker to stay the hell out of her life and she wants nothing more to do with her and for that reason she will not be doing any further Sex and the City sequels or movies or anything more to do with the franchise, which is upsetting because I feel like Samantha kind of is like the heart of what the show is about because while all the characters in the show talk about sex and they really created a movement around sex positivity, Samantha's character played by Kim Cattrall really is at the absolute core of what the sex positivity movement is about. And it's really cool to see that while when Sex and the City first came out over 20 years ago now, Samantha's character was seen as really cutting edge. The fact that she just talked about getting down and dirty with guys and having tons of casual sex and talked about oral sex and all of those things. And she did it so openly, just like while they were meeting for brunch. I'm dating a guy with the funkiest tasting spunk. That at the time was seen as very unique. And now Samantha can really be seen in kind of mainstream popular culture because of sex positivity and feminism. We're seeing more and more women really take ownership of their sexuality in the way that Samantha did. So it's very sad not to see Samantha return. I'm kind of interested to see if there's even any storyline left for them to do. While I absolutely love this show and I will 100% be watching, I just don't know like what are we, what could, more could we possibly see? Like are these, we are gonna keep having just loads of casual sex into their 80s? There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, but how is that gonna work? Are we gonna follow them to like the retirement village? <laughs> like, I'm just interested to see what happens and I will be watching. I will not be judged by you or society. I will wear whatever and blow whomever I want as long as I can breathe and kneel. So an interesting report has come out showing that the number of women who are choosing to be single is quite significantly on the rise. The Office for National Statistics shows that women who are not living in a couple and have never been married is rising in every age range under 70. In the decade and a half between 2002 and 2018, the figure for those aged 40 to 70 rose by half a million. And what's really interesting is the number of never married single women in their 40s has doubled. And I think this is just such a sign of the times that women are actually taking on a lot more sexual agency and becoming more sexually empowered. With dating apps, we now can have physical intimacy, we can have casual sex, and we don't necessarily have 
to be tied down. So we can kind of have a little bit of the best of both worlds. And I definitely just among women that I talk to have seen more of a push towards this of women choosing to be single. Not to mention the rise in sex toy technology I think is definitely helping to aid this trend. And there was a really interesting article in The Guardian written about this where they basically hypothesize why this trend is happening. Journalist Emily John writes, singleness is no longer to be sneered at. Never marrying or taking a long-term partner is a valid choice. For a brief spurt, it even appeared that the single positivity movement was the latest Hollywood cause, with A-listers such as Rashida Jones, Mindy Carling, and Chelsea Handler going proudly on the record about how they have come to embrace their single lives. And I definitely think this is a trend that we are going to see stick around and if not, just become mainstream. I feel like if vibrators keep getting better and men don't step up their game, there is a distinct possibility of that. All right, guys, that was this week in news. I hope you enjoyed this segment. This is a new segment. Like I say, it's gonna be every Monday on my channel. So please hit the notification bell so you can be notified every Monday when this video goes up. YouTube will send you a little notification and give me some feedback in the comments section or even just by giving this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. That's a valid form of feedback too. To let me know what you think of this segment and if there are any other sorts of things you'd like to see me cover in it. But I think this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to something a little bit different for 2021. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. Mm.